looking back, I like the fact that we showed a lot of fight, a lot of things um, did not go our way, but we, we hung in there, we stayed together. And there was definitely some tough moments, but we, we battled back and we're right back in the, we're, we're in the thick of things. Uh, we don't, we're not where we want to be, but I like the fact that we were, we stayed together. We were, we showed a lot of resolve and that's not always easy to do, but we did that. And um, I'm proud of the guys that we fought back and, you know, gave, we're giving ourselves a chance to, to compete for a playoff spot going into these last uh, 38 games. And you mentioned the tough moments and, you know, to us, you were always very positive about the chances of turning things around. Um, what, what did you do to keep the players positive? Um, it, it, you know, what, what, what kind of tactics, tactics did you use? Well, I, I think it was a combination of both. We were the players and the coaches were trying to keep it, each other positive. The thing that I loved about it, I saw the players still battle. I saw them still competing. I know even when we had a lot of guys out, we still, you know, competed and never gave in to the situation. And um, and we, we knew we knew we were uh, in a tough spot, but we, we fought and battled. And, you know, even even when we got back from those games, the, the, uh, the Texas trip and I think New Orleans, uh, we still we still fought and we still battled and that, that gave me hope that you know we just got to get everybody back we got to get everybody back we got to get russell right and you know he got you know banged up in training camp and a few other times after that but we knew i knew that he would be um i knew he would be back to being the player that we we knew he was and but it was tough on him. It was tough on all of us because we weren't we weren't playing well. And then you know Thomas Bryant goes out, and we still did not use that as an excuse, and we just kept fighting. That's what I, I love about this group. They play hard every night. It's not always perfect, but we we give ourselves a chance to win just about every night. Chris Miller. Hey, Scotty. Is everybody accounted for? Everybody in Memphis ready to go tomorrow? Yeah. It was. I mean, there's a couple of things that that happened today myself included um just from the health and safety protocol four players and myself could not be um at practice today but we had all 11 guys we had a great practice uh they finished up about a half an hour ago um the four players that um were not allowed to practice were cleared shortly and they're they're in the gym right now um getting some work in um, while I'm fortunate enough to be able to talk to you guys, but every, everything should be good tomorrow. We hope everything's fine. So other than that, every, everybody was good. The energy was good. Talked to the coaches already and uh, people we're, we're excited about the second half. Was that due to just the travel or can you expound upon that? Why you weren't able to participate or the players? No, it's just the, just the, the safety protocol thing that the NBA has in place. Uh, like I said, they are able to, they're getting some work out today. They just could not um, participate until they were cleared. And we practiced at five and they were just clear, I think at 630. Um, tomorrow will be one year of the last game you guys played in the regular season before COVID hit, that game against the Knicks. What has kind of been the overarching thing that you've learned about coaching through COVID? Um, that the toughest thing is the no fans. That's, that's been very difficult for the players. I'm I, sometimes I, I marvel at them able to be able to go out there and, and compete and, and play with the energy and the determination that they do without having the crowd behind you or the crowd against you. Uh, the thing that I learned also that there's a lot of things that we do um, that not saying that the old school, but you don't necessarily need it to, to have success. I mean, I'm not saying that we will always have no shoot arounds, but I think the players 
they lock in at the four o'clock shoot around even more so than they would at a 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning shoot around maybe because they're they're up they're ready to go and they they've got their day going and their the game is right around the corner so i i kind of i kind of like that i mean that's i don't know if the rest of the coaches like that i like having some i have i like having the option of having a shoot around but now that this has all happened it's very much no option so I learned that, you know, shoot arounds not are overrated, but you don't necessarily need them to, to win a game. You can you can be creative in your film session and the, your scouting reports to have success. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, good, good to see you after this incredibly long layoff. Uh, <laughs> I, just following up on what you said before, are you are you able to coach tomorrow's game? Yeah, we hope so. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, that's that's the plan. Um, like I said, the players are able to practice now um, without getting into all the details. Um, yeah, we hope so. And. Um... You guys, you guys. Can you put your video on, please? I don't feel comfortable talking to you without seeing your face. How, how are we doing now? All right, much better. Uh, I don't know how good my internet connection is, so I figured I'd try to save it. Uh, you guys have a ton of guys who are amongst the league leaders in, in like taking charges, forcing illegal screens, all that kind of stuff. Is that because of the personality of those particular players, the Garrison Matthews and the Mo Wagner's, or is, is that an attitude or a strategy that you guys actively try to enforce with your defense? Well, we, we talk about it a lot, Fred. We talk about charges are important. You know, we keep saying that we have a term, charges are available tonight. It's a choice. The, it's the, it's the teams, they're going to run their offense. You can let them run it freely or you can get in their way and, and take a charge. Charges are, uh, they hook, a lot of times they hurt the momentum of the, their opponent. And we have guys that are willing to do that. And we got guys all throughout the team, not just, you know, we only just have a couple of guys do it. Everybody's put their, they put their body on the line and be able, willing to take the charge. And the other thing of being able to run in the screens on screen sets and illegal screens, I've been hearing it for, I've been hearing it for years that the referees say, it's not a legal screen unless the guy goes through it and gets clipped and, it, and then he, they have to call it. So I've told players, if you're going to see a guy that's going to set a legal screen is, you know, his legs are, you know, all the way out is, you know, a seven footer all of a sudden becomes a six footer because the screen is so wide. You got to be able to go through their legs and draw contact so the referees can call that. But I think our guards are willing to do that. That's not easy to do because there's a lot of times you might end up with the Charlie horse and, and you might be banged up a little bit, but we got a guys that are willing to do that. Zach Scott. Hey, Coach. Uh, in the first half of the season, you saw Rui with improved defense and his usual steady scoring. Uh, what more would you like to see from him in the second half? I think just continue to trend in the right direction defensively. He's, he's the key to our defense because he can guard, you know, at times one through five and athletic, uh, pretty hard to score over if he's really locked in. And, and being locked in is not really like just on the court, but being locked in off the court by knowing the personnel. And that's hard to do. I mean, we're asking him not only to know his man in the backup position, but also the one, twos and threes and the backups of those positions, because you're going to be on, on them any particular time during the game. But I think the more that he studies the league and the more he plays against the league, he's going to be better. And I mean, with what, like I said many times, I don't even know if he finished the 82 game schedule yet, but he's getting there or he's right at it. Um, but I think he's definitely improved a lot in that area. His shooting is going to get better. He just has to I think the thing that I like I like about him is that he's pretty consistent. But I think the thing, if I can say anything that he needs to get better, if he misses a couple of threes, he can't let that get him down. You got to keep keep throwing it up there, keep working on it. And I think I I see I see him being a really good three point shooter, and a, and not not just two a game, maybe six or seven a game. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Neil. Hey, Scott. Rui's at 75, so he's getting close. Getting close. Um, so last time you guys played Memphis, you know, there was talk about, okay, the defensive resistance wasn't really there. I think Brad mentioned, you know, the game before an all-star break and the game coming back is like always tough mentally focusing, things like that. How do you try and prepare the team to make sure they come out with the right mindset from the tip off tomorrow? Well, yeah, they, they, they attacked us both ends of the court. They were, they were physical defensively, uh, offensively, they got to the paint and they, they were, they were, they gave us problems. Um, but I think we have a, a chance to redeem ourselves. We're going to have to play better. This is a good team. They're fighting. They're, they're, they're on the, on the rise themselves. And they got a little point guard that, is not an all-star this year, but I see him being one probably next season, the way he's improved season, season over season. We're going to have to keep them out of the paint. We're going to have to do a better job in their pick and rolls. And this is one of, this is, it's crazy. This is one of the best uh, float teams in the league. It seems like everybody has a little floater in the key when they get into the paint. Uh, but he has one of the best in, the, in, in his position. Uh, but yeah, we, we have to do, we have to show more physicality to give ourselves a chance to win tomorrow night. Quinn. Hey coach, any update on Ish Smith? Um, not yet. Um, I'm assuming we will get, get one soon. Um, yeah, we'd love to have him back, but right now, I don't even know, is it, is it over a little over three weeks, right? Yep. So we'll have, I mean, I'm assuming we'll have something within the next week or so. Okay. And also, how did you spend your, I guess, mini all-star break? Uh, was it completely immersed in basketball stuff and how to improve this team? Or did you kind of take a step back to just relax and do some other things like Netflix or something? Nah, you just, I think um, I definitely gave myself some time off uh, just to just to recharge, but I also did a lot of thinking too and reflecting on how, what I can do um, what we can do differently, you know, tweak here and there on, on offense. I, I have a few things that, you know, we're going to do in the second half, just subtle things and on both ends. But I think I told the players, you know, take some time off. Don't just, you know, lay on a couch and eat potato chips all day, but take some time off and, you know, get a, get a workout or two in. And, and I think they did, they did, they came, they came back from my, the coach just told me they came back great, energized, and they're ready to go. But I think it's important. It's a, it's a grind. And this year is totally different with all the things that the players and the coaches have to go through. And it's uh, very unique. Hopefully, this is the last year we have to deal with it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, we'll finish up with Lewis. Hey, Coach. Hope you had a nice all-star break. Um, Myers Leonard was uh, recorded earlier saying uh, an anti-Semitic slur on Instagram, um, or on in a live stream rather. Um, and of course, Wizards have a Jewish player, um, and Myers represents the NBA in some way. So, uh, what do you make of that? And um, have you addressed the team? Do you plan on addressing the team or or talking to Denny? How do you plan on showing your support for for the Jewish player that you have on your team? Yeah, I mean, I I read that. I don't know what. I mean, I didn't watch the video or anything. Um, unacceptable, totally unacceptable. Um, I think our players players know know better. And if that's if that's him and that's true and it's unacceptable, I'm sure the league will um, do the right thing and address it. But our that's our players know that that's not that's not cool. That's un, that's unacceptable and that's not the the values that the league has in place um and definitely yeah not not good if, if that's all I mean, like i said I, I just saw i just read it i don't know wasn't gonna didn't look into it but yeah that's our players know better are you are, do you plan on saying anything to denny about it um no i mean not not now i mean i talked to denny and I talked to all of our guys about a lot of things other than basketball. Um, if it comes up, definitely I'm not gonna not gonna uh, shy from any conversations, even um, to any of our guys. But you know, Danny knows that 
that's not that's not acceptable and our players know the same i would i would not um tolerate any of that if it happens on our team hey robin just uh first of all how'd you spend your all-star break i just stayed in my apartment you stayed in dc enjoyed it immensely that's good to hear um did anything stand out to you about the first half as you kind of uh stepped away and, and, and thought about the, all the things you guys went through? Um, hmm. I don't know that I, uh, that I took a moment to reflect on the, the first half of the season, but uh, I know we've all been enjoying this, this, uh, this past stretch of games we've had quite a bit. Um, everybody's pulling for each other and I, I, I can't wait to get out there on the floor tomorrow. Neil. Hey, Robin, you kind of alluded to it already. You've been in a vet in this league for a long time, had several second halves of seasons. How would you compare and contrast, you know, where the confidence of this team is going into the second half um, compared to some of your other stops? Um, it's it's uh, very positive right now. I think we realize we have a lot of work to get done, but uh, there's a lot of good energy and People, it's people, people are excited to be playing right now. And that's a good feeling to have this deep into the season. Chase. Um, Robin, uh, if you don't mind, uh, you sent out a, a tweet earlier that was just hilarious um, with some mascots that were kind of calling you out. And you said, who do you think you have with you? Uh, gritty. Um, what does what does gritty mean in in that uh, in that situation? I mean, gritty. I think uh, at least in the in the minds of the general public and the fans, I think he's possibly the most unhinged, most intimidating mascot or sports mascot. I would have to assume there is. So uh, I think he's the bar they're probably trying to reach for. I don't know if they're going to attain it because I know them. I know them well now. I've engaged them quite a few times. I'm not sure if they're going to get there, but they're welcome to try. Zach. Hey, Robin. Uh, I have a Samurai Blue related question for you again. Um, you. For the Clippers game, uh, you wore a different Team Japan jersey. This time it was a number 10. Uh, whose number 10 was it, by the way? Oh, Kagawa-san. And uh, last time, uh, Honda-san uh, brought good luck uh, to the team. But are you aware that the team is 2-0 and when you wear a Samurai Blue jersey? Is that true? I'm going to have to keep that in mind. I told Rui yeah. I, have, uh, I have two or three other ones. So I'm going to have to pick and choose uh, when I'm going to pull those out. Sounds good. Uh, you're batting 1,000. I hope it continues. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. Thank you. Hey, Robin, we all know that the hook shot is that that's your shot. And uh, after some much needed research, I found out that you and Nikola Jokic actually lead the league in hook shot shooting percentage with 62.2% on those shots. You guys both shoot 46 for 74 on hook shots. How does that make you feel as one of the more renowned hook shot shooters in the NBA at this time? Oh, and that's something I've always been proud of. Um, obviously a go-to skill of mine. And I think we're all aware how, uh, how adroit, how dangerous um, the Joker is on offense. So, I mean, that's, that's good company, I think, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Thank you, Robin. Lewis. Hey, Robin. Uh, your former teammate, uh, Myers Leonard, uh, was caught on a live stream saying a, an ugly anti-Semitic slur. Um, and uh, I'm curious if you've reached out to Denny at all to express your solidarity and, and what you make of, of the incident. And from your relationship with Myers, maybe you can speak to what he's like and, um, and how you can be a good teammate to Denny uh, when something like this happens. Yeah, that's, that's a really unfortunate incident. Um, in my time with Myers, I never experienced anything like that. So um, I, don't, I don't think he's changed too much. And I, I, I realize that's a really ugly word. There's no getting around it. There's no apologizing for that. Um, 
I, you know, I hope um, he recognizes the severity of what he said, and I hope he can um, he can move on from that. As far as as Denny, um, you know, we really haven't talked about it as a team, but I think he, he's aware that, that you know we we stand with him. We stand with with anybody of uh, any any of the any Jewish people, any of the Jewish faith.